Hello, and welcome to the Tesla Economist. I'd appreciate you guys hitting the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Yes, we've heard the videos that say Tesla could actually reach $10 trillion in 2030, and then other videos that have mentioned possible $30 or $40 trillion valuations. Yet most of them are only taking into account the actual auto sales, as it's too hard to price up the energy business and all the other businesses not to mention robo-taxis. So what if I'm the one who's actually brave enough to attempt to forecast a Tesla future if everything well, went well for the company and price up the rest of the businesses? Despite all the inevitable ridicule that I'm about to receive, which is why no one is brave enough to do it properly, because they look so stupid, but I'm here to attempt it. But rather than ridicule me, Perhaps we could actually go through it all, and together we can genuinely attempt to work out how wrong my numbers might be with your comments. There's a type of question people are asked on intelligence tests and job interviews. It's a sort of mathematical common sense problem. There's no way to know the right answer, but you intelligently do what you can to try and get an answer in the same ballpark, rather than possibly in an order of magnitude of difference. An example of such a question might be, how many windows are there in Manhattan Island? There's no way to count all the windows, so you might guess by thinking, how many windows might there be per person? Maybe four. Then how many people in the island? Maybe two million. Then you can guess eight million windows. So. Either way, there's probably a good chance that there's between 4 and 16 million windows within one standard deviation, perhaps, which gives us some idea, at least. So perhaps we can use a similar formula in calculating robo-taxis and energy, then, perhaps. We can get some rough ranges of what to expect if all goes well with the company. So we're gonna, this is going to be all best-case scenario, so bear with me on this. Um, and let's lay down some of the assumptions for the best case scenario so we know what we're talking about. And let's say this is about 2030 or so, around that time. So let's say that Tesla has no serious competition and still has no trouble selling any of their cars. Their production rate now at this day, they've got up to 40 million a year, uh, given the extra factories they've got. Uh, the Model 2 probably being the biggest uh, produced, and it's a smaller car, so it would be easier and quicker to produce. And also after 10 more years or so of manufacturing improvements and technology, that Elon said it could potentially improve by 1,000 to 10,000% productivity, um, and he likens it to a microchip. So uh, there's all that improvement potential. Uh, we're working on Tesla having a 40% market share of the entire auto industry. So remember, a lot of nations are banning ICE cars uh, along 2030, um, and it, more of them are happening now, and that's 100 million cars uh, a year almost being sold, if, it, if it's global, you know? That's 100 million electric vehicles. So Tesla's the only one showing any signs of ramping up to that sort of scale. By this stage, an electric motor and battery would be less than half the price of the equivalent ICE engine. Uh, probably much less. But either way, it's not going to be feasible for ICE cars to continue uh, and be able to compete. The dilemma of the competition is it's going to be too difficult for EVs to com for them to go into EVs to compete against Tesla, especially this late in the game. The Model 3 will eventually have a starting price of $35,000 and likely around a range of 600 miles. The equivalent Model Y would probably be 40000 The Model 2 would be at $25,000 and the range might be about 400 miles. They managed to get their margins to 30%. Full self-driving is now at the cost of $50,000 and still 50% of cars are purchasing it. Uh, robo-taxis have passed all the necessary regulation and have been running for some time in cities, 
and full self-driving has been proven to reduce crashes by one-tenth when being used. At this stage, we will have 100 million robo-taxis in use. So it's going to have a, give us a good idea of how much robo-taxis could produce when they, when they really are uh, have a decent share going. Uh, let's say a robo-taxi makes $30,000 a year. And Tesla give 50% of the earned income to the Tesla owners for robo-taxis. And Tesla own half the robo-taxi fleet as well. Tesla can make enough batteries to supply all their demand. Tesla can also make enough solar to supply all their demand. Tesla does not have any issues with any electrical grid regulations and are able to use all their auto bidder software. Every Tesla is insured by Tesla's insurance company. As it would be much cheaper to be insured by Tesla because they know all the information on your driving and know how safe a driver you are, uh, the insurance margins will be the best of any other car insurance company. Probably low overheads for Tesla to run. Uh, they might offer no deductible if you're in an accident and you have FSD on. So that, let's say they make $500 per driver. There uh, at this stage are 200 million Teslas on the road. Just imagine the collection of data they would have by then. Let's go under the assumption that Tesla does still sell cars to the public and not simply make them only for robo taxis. And these figures do not represent full saturation. It will likely take another 10 to 20 years to full, fully transition to sustainable energy. In other words, even after 2030, Tesla won't stop growing. I'm just going to leave out the charging uh, network income as I don't think it has any major impact into the other insane numbers that we're going to be seeing. Okay, I know that all sounds like a lot of hypothetical situations, but it all appears that they're quite possibly on track to achieve a lot of it. And if not by 2030, then likely not far off. What difference does a few, a few years make really when you're thinking long-term investing? Now for energy, let's take 500 million households with the most expensive electricity costs in the world. The likes of Australia have expensive electricity, yet an abundant source of solar. Same is true with many other countries. So what if they save each customer $1,000 a year in electricity and Tesla still make $1,000 a year profit? This really feels more like what is capable of their technology today, not 10 years, but let's, let's just go with that. Let's say they're also able to reduce their costs through arbitrage, electricity, let's say they're also able to use electricity costs through arbitrage with auto bidder software tied into their battery storage. When there's a high demand for electricity and the price is high, they release power to the, into the grid. When there's a low demand for electricity and the price is low, they recharge their own batteries. And there's an advanced algorithm in their software, auto bidder, or whatever the equivalent will be by then that controls it all. This could be great for African nations. Many places there have to use diesel as their energy source to power their houses. It's not uh, only expensive and inefficient, but also time consuming as they're continually having to collect more diesel. Just think how beneficial solar and battery would be as a power source and would save money. Take a look at these numbers. We said 200 million Teslas on the road by this stage, 40 million cars manufactured this year, 2030 or thereabouts. Percentage of cars that Tesla will take for their own robo taxi fleet, 50%, let's say. So the number of cars sold to the public would be 20 million. Average sale price, we're going to say, is $35,000, with a 30% margin they've reached by this stage, giving them a gross margin of $10,500 per vehicle sold. And if they're selling 20 million, that gives them $700 billion in revenue. And at that margin, we are going to see $210 billion gross profit. 
for just vehicle sales. Then we have insurance. So we're going to estimate that $500 per vehicle um, is uh, how much profit we make. And Tesla will probably own maybe a quarter of the vehicles out there um, for themselves in their robo taxi fleet. So the remainder at $500 each would give another $25 billion a year gross profit. <clears throat> However, Elon has said before that he would expect insurance to be about half of what auto sales are, and those numbers don't match, but perhaps he's not expecting auto sales to be this high either. <laughs> so then we have full self-driving. So we said now that the cost of full self-driving is $50,000, and you know we're looking 10 years in the future. It's going to be amazing by this stage. It'll be perfect. Um, percentage of cars that buy it with, with full self-driving, we're just going to say it's 50%. So then there's another annual full self-driving gross profit of $500 billion. Okay, so now on to robo-taxis. So at this stage, we're going to guess that there's 100 million robo-taxis in the world. And estimating that each robo-taxi is bringing in $30,000. And the percentage of robo-taxis that Tesla own are 50%. And the commission on the robo-taxis that they don't own, they give the owners 50% too. So the annual robo-taxi revenue would be $3 trillion. And the annual share revenue out of that would be $750 billion, leaving an annual robo-taxi gross profit of $2.25 trillion. Then we have solar. Okay, so uh, average solar customer is probably going to be about $100 a month, maybe. And if they have 100 million customers by this stage, that's an annual income of $120 billion a year. And maybe at this stage they're doing 20 million annual installs, and a cost of an install is perhaps $2,000. Uh, annual cost for that would be $40 billion. So that would leave $80 billion gross profit for solar. And of course, all these say gross profit, taking away these costs, but you know, really these are incremental investments that are all are really just going to increase the profit more and more and more, assuming the customer retention is, is high. And there's no reason it wouldn't be because it's saving people money. So it's arbitrary where you cross sect this really, because years later, this is going to be more and more, because it's just going to accumulate more and more because it saves people money, it's that simple. Um, okay, now we come to energy. So let's say at this stage, all the batteries that have been implemented into the grid um, are reasonably substantial and make, having quite an effect. There's a, a lot of, a lot of um, gigawatts or terawatts out there now of storage, so let's say it is affecting 500 million people, saving them that much, saving that many people money, uh, and let's say <clears throat> it's making Tesla a thousand dollars per person. And again, the incremental cost that of just building more and more um, batteries. Let's say they're investing a hundred billion dollars a year with more batteries into the energy grid. So that would leave them a gross profit of 400 more billion dollars a year. Then Elon said he's probably going to do an HVAC system. So let's guess that they make $1,000 profit per HVAC. And obviously this HVAC is so amazing and it's so energy efficient and it's so smart and clever and it knows when you're coming home because it reacts interacts with your 
Tesla and knows how far away you are and how what your temperature in the car is and it's obviously everyone's going to want it eventually when it's time to get an HVAC system this is the only one to get really um, so let's say at this stage he's selling 50 million a year that gives us another gross profit of another 50 billion dollars a year so then when you add all these up you get the gross profit of about three and a half trillion dollars I also did a quick sum here of total revenue and it comes in at roughly five trillion dollars so that does sound like a lot but okay hear me out that is you know that's a sixteenth of global GDP I think global, global, global GDP is about 80 trillion dollars so that's a sixteenth or so could be through Tesla in this scenario I mean is that so unbelievable if they have totally vertically vertically integrated uh, vertically integrated transportation and energy is it unbelievable maybe even they'll be spending money on advertising by this stage but either way giving them a PE ratio of around 25 the company is going to have a market cap of around 100 trillion dollars and looking at these numbers it would appear that their greatest potential is obviously in robo taxis so I mean, even if I am one tenth off this number even if it's just you know it just quarter of a trillion dollars profit it would still make Tesla worth probably ten trillion dollars so it's really about robo taxis with this company more than anything and if they can achieve that and and full self driving obviously similar similar thing then it's easily going to be worth ten trillion I can see that hundred trillion might be a bit extreme but there's a lot of potential for this company and that's why people are so excited about it and that's why no one's selling don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks again.